Hi everybody, hope you're well. Today I will read from a book titled Roberto Sambonet Design by Arturo Carlo Quintavalle, published by Federico Motta Editore. I remember my initial visits to the Sambonet home many, many years ago. Then, Guia and her brother were small, entering you would only catch a glimpse of them ushered away by kind hands. The hall was narrow after the courtyard and the stairs. On the floor, a set of oval stones, mementos from a journey in other times and cultures and which I was not then bold enough to inquire about. Then, all around, unusual antiques and drawings by artists, friends or people admired. Fontana and Melotti, but Sironi too. The most striking room was that to the left, spacious with a long wicker chair which in the mid-19th century preceded Le Corbusier's iron and leather structure. In the center, an enormous container holding perhaps a hundred walking sticks ivory handles turned yellow with use, bone handles slightly more granular and darker, cherry wood and boxwood shafts, or hardwood from the Orient and light wood from the West, shafts in olive wood and walnut, varnished and lightened, but often consumed and polished. Many stories, a passion. Sambonet merely glanced at them my collection, he told me. I have never discovered how he built it up, although I can imagine where, from England to China, from Thailand to the small shops in 6th Avenue in Manhattan, from Brazil to Mexico to Peru. The journey into the home poses many problems and it is hard today to fully understand why here such different images are superimposed. This journey is, however, important for an understanding of how Sambonet plans and perceives his existence. He is his home, there, in the room, as well as in the walking sticks, some rare finds, shells taken from the seabed, stone-colored fossils and translucent shells, rainbow-colored, which emerged from the sea a few years ago. On the walls, the odd 19th century portrait of those cherished by long-standing Milanese families to keep the memory of a familiar face alive over the generations. Just beyond, another threshold, the room with the easel, for in those days, Sambonet used to paint at home, not in the studio as he does now. Journeying through the rooms of the house and in the corridors running along bookshelves cramped with volumes, books on architecture, on painting, exhibition catalogues, books on the graphic arts and volumes of magazines, old and new, German and English books, Japanese and Dutch ones. The house is more than that sort of antique shop it may seem on entering that of an antique dealer who has traveled in the Far East. When you enter the room with the largest table and the telephones, a table used for drawing, there, in that room, suddenly everything changes. On the walls there is the odd modern painting, but it is like entering a different space, the space of design, of reflection on today's world. The talk on painting remains confined to the adjacent room, together with the collections of works and of the natural. The designs of all these years were born on that table. Or rather, the first ideas pass here, the sketches for the posters, which were then programmatically organized for the Brera Picture Gallery the designs for Richard Ginori Chinaware, with their complicated relationship with Paul Klee, the glasses, the metals, everything later revisited by the artist in different spaces, in different places, mainly in the factory and in the ground floor studio in the courtyard. But let us continue this visit of the house, for it is this journey which affords an understanding of Sambonet's perception of a project, how he has lived it, concretely, over the years. <laughs> 